Okay everybody, this is Moody Dashcam. If you enjoy these videos, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe. I also have an Instagram and TikTok, both at Moody Dashcam. I post on those daily, if you want to go follow me on that. Alright, so today we are in Brooklyn. We're going to be in Bath Beach, Brooklyn right now. We're not really in Bath Beach, but we will get there. And we're going to be talking about the Bath Avenue crew. They were a very young crew of guys that was very, very vicious and did a lot without ever really being part of, like, officially part of the Mafia. <clears throat> so it started out as a bunch of kids who'd hang around the neighborhood. They'd hang around on Bath Avenue, a place called Big Nick's, Big Nick's Discount Store, which is kind of like a candy shop, uh, kind of like one-stop shop for everything type store. And that was a heavy Mafia area, so whenever the <clears throat> gangsters around there would see them, they'd toss them 20 bucks, they'd say... Oh, can you park my car? Can you wash my car? Here's some money, blah, blah, blah. They, so they, they started to learn, hey, if you just hang around the neighborhood, you start getting money from these, these gangsters. And obviously, that turns into admiration for them, and then they want to be kind of a part of that life. So this started out when these kids were very young. I mean, 8 years old, 10 years old. By 13, these guys were uh, loaning money to other kids in the neighborhood and probably adults and uh, hiding dirty guns for mobsters. It, it's crazy. So, the leader, this all happened in the 1990s. The leader of the crew is uh, Paul Galino, other no, otherwise known as Paul Brass or Paulie Brass. I'm assuming probably because he had brass balls. That's, you know, what comes to mind. I don't know that for sure. But the original crew is Jimmy Gap, Tommy Reynolds, Joey the Zip, Fabrizio DeFrancisi, De F I guess that's how you pronounce that name, right? And then later on, so those are the original members, and then later on, um, Nicky Tuzo, Mikey Y, Will Applehead Galloway, uh, Chris Pacciello, Anthony Gonzalez. Um, the first seven members all got tattoos on their ankle, one through seven. Uh, Paul Galino was, of course, number one. And it was kind of like this, uh, this little pact they had each other. They'll do anything to get into the Bonanno crime family. That was their ultimate goal, was to become made members of the Bonanno crime family. So that kind of is, is one of the reasons why they're so ruthless because they were trying to prove themselves so often. So their first big crew operation was one of their members got killed, right? They don't know who killed one of their members, but this guy by the name of Mikey Hamster <clears throat> was going around saying he was the one who killed one of their members. So of course, uh, later on, they found out that Mikey Hamster did not actually do it. He was just claiming it just for his own um, his own notoriety, trying to get made himself. These are all members of their little crews. They weren't really part of the mafia. They were kind of run around guys. So Mikey Hamster is trying to make a name for himself, claims that he killed a member of the Bath Avenue crew. So Paulie goes takes two of his guys, Jimmy Gap and Joey the Zip, and gives them a gun. Some articles say it was a pistol, some articles say it was an Uzi. Well, I guess we'll never really know. So they, they go out in the town, they try and look for this kid, Mikey Hamster. They catch him, they catch him walking, and he gets into this guy, Bobby the Chico's car. Okay? So they're following behind him, and now Mikey Hamster realizes he's getting followed, so him being a tough guy, which he, he was probably a tough guy, Pop his head out the window, kind of taunting him. So the driver, Jimmy, takes out his gun and just starts... Oh, no, sorry, the driver was Joey. Takes out his gun and just starts firing at this car, at this guy, right? And uh, ends up hitting the kid a few times. Car pulls off to the side. <clears throat> Mikey Hamster jumps out and starts running. It's too late. He's already too shot up. He, he dies later on. But, um... So this happens at the corner of 
17th Avenue and Benson Avenue, right off Bath Avenue. We're gonna we're heading to that now. But uh, so they shoot up this kid, they kill him, which they did what they, they were meaning to do, and uh, kid dies on the side of the road. So the driver shoots down a random road and tosses the gun to the passenger Jimmy. Jimmy shoves the hot gun down his pants just to, you know, they cause a lot of ruckus. They, they don't want to get stopped or anything. And of course, they see the flashing red and blue lights behind them. They're getting pulled over. Your worst nightmare after a situation like that. So they pull off to the side of the road and they're like, they're in shock that they're going to go to jail for the rest of their life. Who knows how true the story is? This is what I read. The cop pulls up to the window, and apparently they think that they were pulled over for speeding because they were shooting around like crazy people. And as the cop walks up to the window, they hear, psh, like, radio static, and uh, shots fired at this crossing and this crossing, 17th and Benson. He looks at the guys, he goes, it's your lucky day. And he goes to the shooting, which is the shooting they just did. That's some movie scenes type stuff. So how true that is, like I said, I don't know. But I can only go by what I read. So that's a pretty crazy story all, all by itself. And then, yeah, this was kind of still at the tail end of the crack era. So they were all into drugs. They were all into selling drugs. Like I said, they were a crazy crew. They did anything to make money, anything to make a name for themselves. Fabrizio, one of the, he was one of the more ruthless members. In court papers, it says that he uh, stabbed, beat, and burned victims. At least three acts of torture, including a blowtorch, a noose, and a cigarette lighter. I'm not lying when I say these guys are pretty crazy. I'm going to rattle off a list of uh, the crimes that these guys did, and I'm going to have to take a deep breath before. That's how crazy the list is. All right. Bank robbery, home invasion, hijacking chop shops, extortion, burglary, auto theft, prostitution, human trafficking, weapons trafficking, drug trafficking, kidnapping, witness intimidation, jury intimidation, assault, rape, bombing, contract killing, arson, assassination, torture, murder, death threats, and loan sharking. I've looked up a lot of crews in the Mafia. M many much bigger than this little uh, ragtag group, and I never saw it, seen a list that long. So that just goes to show how crazy these guys were, how dedicated they were to trying to become real members of the mafia. So Tommy Reynolds once, in a fit of rage, poked um, a fork through somebody's eye. Uh, the crew once committed a double homicide over an eight ball of cocaine. Now, in 1991, Anthony Spiro... The consigliere for the Bananos, very high up, and uh, also Joseph Bonanti, who is another ma made guy in the Colombo family, were kind of... Uh, they were the ones that ran that area of the Bananos, and those were... The guys that the Bath Avenue crew looked up to and wanted to become and wanted to be, and wanted to be respected by. So in 1991, this guy by the name of Vincent Bickelman, a known drug addict of the area, a known like conniving dude, robs one of Anthony Spiro's daughter's houses. I'm sure he didn't know what he was doing at the time. But he robs her house, he steals jewelry and a fur coat and stuff like that. Later on he's found the neighborhood, I mean, not the smartest guy ever. He's found it in the neighborhood trying to sell the stuff. Two guys catch him selling the stuff, they beat him, you know, half to death. And Spiro goes to Paul Galino, he goes, hey, I have this guy, you want to go kill him? He says, sure. He jumps on the opportunity. He wanted to get the respect from Spiro. Uh, so the guy was found dead with six bullet wounds around the corner from a police station. I mean, he did not care. He, he did anything it took. 
That's good. Paul going down. Then they're out celebrating the murder. They thought it was only a matter of time before Paul Galino gets made to like legitimize their whole crew. They can start making more money. They can start getting more respect on the street. A member of the crew after this, Chris Pacciello, who has his own story. I'll be doing a video on him. Don't worry about that. Uh, he needed help with a job. It was an easy job in his mind. It was an old man who had a house in Staten Island that had a million dollars in a safe. Now, he didn't know at the time, but his information was all wrong. So he gets the help of Jimmy Gap and uh, Reynolds, who Reynolds was um, Tommy Reynolds, who was selling crack and at this point using crack himself. So they go up to the Staten Island house, knock on the door. A woman opens the door, a middle-aged woman. Reynolds shoots her right in the face. Obviously a huge mistake. They run back to the car, hop in the car, and dart out into the night. This made the cops, the FBI, the community swarm them. It was just a, just a, a housewife answering the door, just finished sipping tea with her husband, and gets killed. So that brought a lot of heat down on the crew. Then after this, so Spiro's looking at them going, hey, you guys can't be doing stuff like this. You're, this is not the way to be in this little crew you have. So at this point, a war with the 20th Avenue crew, who's a very similar crew, broke out, bringing heat to Brooklyn. I mean, they were shooting, they turned this, turned Brooklyn into like a shooting gallery. It was insane. It was so bad that uh, Joey the Zip would not leave his house without a bulletproof vest and four pistols on him. And that's how crazy stuff got. Who knows if he was just a paranoid dude, but they really were shooting like crazy. Um, so Spiro had to put an end to it, and Paul Galino didn't. He wanted to prove himself that he could be in this murderous crew and, crew and go back at these guys that were going at them and whatever. So they get into a loud argument and Galino decides to push Anthony Spiro. Now, people who know the Mafia code know that you never ever put your hands on a mate guy. So Spiro sees that, turns around, walks away. Now at this point, Paul Galino knows, oh God, I just fucked up bad, you know? This right here is the corner. 17th Avenue and Benson. This is the corner where that big shootout happened with uh, the, the original shootout that I was telling you guys about. <clears throat> the next spot that we're going to go to is Nick's Discount Store. Big Nick's Discount Store. I believe it's still there. It's right down the block, actually. I have to make a right. It's right over here. So he pushes um, Anthony Spiro and pretty much knows he it was it was pretty much like committing suicide that's what people were saying so he's all paranoid now he knows how it goes and if I make it right here oh don't tell me the place closed down I'll be upset that's a shame so yeah like I said he's super paranoid he's held up in his Harlow apartment doesn't want to see anybody he doesn't trust any members of his crew because it's, it's known that if you want to be killed, the Mafia finds a way to do it. Not if you want to be killed, if the Mafia wants you killed. All right, let's, oh, it's still here. Nick's Discount Store. So this store right here is really like the beginning of the Bath Avenue crew. So this block, we're on Bath Avenue now. This block is a, a notorious block for stuff like that. He's still a very nice guy. I just read an article that he gives out candy on Halloween. All right, we're going to punch in another spot in the GPS real quick here. Not far away. We're going to have to make a U-turn, not a problem. Which is a social club, Cafe Caserta, where a lot of this stuff went on at. A lot of the, a lot of the members of the Columbos and the members of Bath Avenue um, hung out at a lot. 
that had any crew. This was a known spot that even cops hang out at. It was kind of known that if you double parked in front of this cafe that you weren't going to get a ticket. Cops were always in and out of this place and uh, later on it was, I think it was a sergeant or a lieutenant very high up got arrested for um, wiping tickets away and looking up plates for these high up gangsters in the, in the Bananos. Oh, did I say Columbus before I meant Bananos? Now we're turning on to Cropsy Avenue. So yeah, held up in his house, doesn't trust anyone. His two closest friends at the time, Joey Zip and Reynolds, are, uh, are the only ones he trusts, really. So of course, Anthony Spiro knows those are the only two guys he trusts. So he tells those two guys, you're going to kill him. And they, all they want in life is to be loved and respected by the Bananos, and this is the way to do it. So they go to his house, knock on the door, he opens the door for them. They ask for a drink, and he turns his back to them, and they light him up. Nine bullets in his back and the back of his head. That's how it goes. You can't really trust, you, you don't really have friends when you're in the Mafia. Anyone could be turned on you, and you could be turned on anyone. That's just how it goes. So yeah, they left him for dead for his parents to find him. Uh, in the end, Fabrizio was the only one to ever become a member of the Bananos, who he ended up getting a life in prison in 2001. So that didn't really pan out well for him. Uh, Joey the Zip was working at a pizzeria, or Italian place at the time, and he got into beef with a customer over a calzone order, jumped the counter and pistol whipped two people, and uh, got 13 years for assault and possession of a gun. And uh, Spiro, oh, Lamborghini. Spiro and uh, Bonanti both ended up dying in prison. All right, we're pulling up on this area soon. So yeah, th this is the kind of story that, uh, not that there's a really happy ending to any of my videos, but all these guys ended up ratting on each other, um, informing, killing each other. It's just not a life that people want anymore, or that's even around anymore. The Mafia is a fraction of what it used to be, a sliver of what it used to be. <clears throat> You don't see social clubs out like this whole area was this big mob infested area it's just a regular little town now i'm sure there's still the places here and there if you're really involved and you know but nothing nothing like what it used to be i wonder what this place cafe uh caserta is now. I guess we'll find out in a minute, right? So this is 2029 Bath Avenue. I find it kind of crazy how they really were on Bath Avenue. Like, everything they did, all the spots, that was Bath Avenue. Alright, we're passing... We're on Bath Avenue again. Passing Bay 25th. It should be here on the left. It looks like it might be that um, gated up spot. Yeah, I think it is. I think it's that gated up spot. Nope, 2029, it was that pharmacy. <clears throat> All right, so that's pretty much everything I have to tell you about the Bath Avenue crew. If you enjoyed the video, as always, I'd appreciate it if you would subscribe. Um, I have an Instagram and TikTok, both at Mooney Dashcam, if you wanna check those out. And yeah, see you.